In this video, we want to add the ability for our platform to reverse so that we can create a loop where it moves upwards and then, you know, maybe waits for a little bit and then moves downwards and then we can loop that forever. So let's set that up. I'm going to open up my blueprint moving platform and, um, you know, maybe we highlight all this and say move the platform just to be really clear about that. Now let's think about what we want to do and, and break this out into concepts. We want to reverse movement, right? We want to reverse the platform. So I'm going to make a new custom event. I'm typing custom event. We'll call this reverse movement. That way, anytime we want to reverse, then we can pull into here. And you'll see we already have a node for this. Our animator, we can play forward or we can reverse it. And keep in mind, this is reverse from the current point. So theoretically, if we called reverse while it was halfway through, it should you know, go back the other way. I think I want that in this case. You could, do, you could experiment with that and do some other complicated things. I'm just gonna say reverse, reverse from the current point. We're, we don't need to skip to the end and it's fine. So when it's finished, when we've completed our current journey, we wanna do something, right? First, I think we wanna wait. But um, whether we're going forward or backward, I want to do something when we're finished. So I'm going to pull off of this node. And I'm going to type in something called delay. And you'll see there's two types of delays here. Um, one just resets and the other uh, just ignores. Um, you, you can experiment with these if you, if you want to try some other things. I'm just going to do a standard delay. You may find you want a retriggerable. That's, that's totally fine. This duration right here. I think in this case, I may want the designer to be in control of that. I think a level designer might want to configure which platforms will pause at different times. So as a shortcut, I'm going to right click and promote this to variable. And then I'm going to rename it pause time. I think it's good. And in order to expose it in the details panel, I also need to click this little eyeball or instance editable uh, so that the designer can change that value. So it's gonna pause for some amount of time, or you could just put the time in here, which you know is, is not great, but you could. If you compile and save, then you'll now have the option to give it a default value. Um, I think we should start at one. I think 0.2 is not gonna be noticeable enough. I think one is a good default for most moving platforms. Compile save. And let's think about it. So we finish our current action, it reaches its journey. We pause, we delay. And then we want to do something next. Now, at this point, we're, we need to decide the next thing to do, right? Like, do we want to start movement or reverse? And I think, to me, it makes sense. We could either do a check to see what, you know, is it zero? Then we want to start movement. If it's one, we want to reverse. Um, you could do that. Um, I think that would be a perfectly fine way of doing that. So you could pull in the lerp alpha and say, uh, at zero seconds, I want to start movement. If it's... One, I want to reverse. Another way, I'm, I'm just going to see how this goes. I'm going to try a uh, flip-flop, which means do one and then do the other and then do the other and then do the other. And it should just go between the two. So anytime we delay and we hit this, we want to decide what to do next. And because we have our custom functions, we can say, okay, call it again and start movement. Now here's, here's the problem. Maybe you're already catching this um, as I'm doing it. But imagine a scenario when we're running through this whole thing, right? On level start, we do our initial setup and uh, caching our current location, and we start movement. And we run through this whole thing, does the movement, finish, delay, pause time, flip-flop. It's gonna start on A, so we're starting our movement again when we hit this first one. So if you do it this way, just make sure that the first thing that happens is gonna be A, we're probably gonna to want to reverse it first and then do this. Or you know, you could set up some toggle as a designer where they can um, reverse on start or something. You could build a system for that. I think you know, a little too much for now. So at this point, we have our system and we have our animator. It's manipulating the platform. And you come here whenever we're finished, we delay, we wait the amount of time specified by the designer. And then we, first time around, we reverse it, and then we start it, and then we reverse it, and we start it, and we loop that forever. We're gonna test this.
and through our tests, we see that this hangs up for a really long time right there. And you may think that your platform is broken. And in a way it is, it's, it's actually a tiny bug that we didn't catch the first time around. And you may think, well, okay, is this taking longer, longer time than it's supposed to? And if you double click, okay, so what's happening here is the length of my entire timeline is five seconds even though I'm only animating the first second of it. So think of it as a lot of dead space over here. And we're just waiting for this timeline to finish, not our last keyframe. So to fix this, all we need to do is come over here to our length, change that to one second, and you'll see it'll clip it off right there. Hit compile, hit save. Let's actually go back in here, review. Okay, pull this down. I'm gonna group all this together and say, comment, pause, and determine next action. See, so yeah, I'm leaving notes for myself and uh, compartmentalizing these blocks of code. It's good practice. Okay, let's try it out. Compile, save. On our first go through, we'll hit here, we'll hit reverse, then we'll start, then we'll reverse, then we'll start. Play. Great. And it should keep looping. And now we can position these around our level and and then you could create some little challenges for that. And the designer can reposition them however they want to get some greater effect. Now, the one thing I am noticing is that even though I may have my destination in mind, I'm moving everything at the same speed, right? Like this is only traveling from zero to one second. So I think the next thing that makes sense to add to our moving platform is some way to affect the speed. And we're gonna do that by um, doing some math according to our playback or uh, adjusting that according to a speed.